Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss two general business tax credit. The first one is the tax credit for rehabilitation expenditure and the second one will, will be for the work opportunity tax credit. The reason I chose to bunch those two together because we have many general business tax credit because when I was in practice, I happened to have a client that had both credits at the same time. So that's why I would like to bunch those two together. Well, guess what? Individuals or businesses for that matter can claim, if you're, if you're self-employed, can claim tax credit for cost associated with renovating what? industrial and commercial building, as well as certified historic structure. So simply put, we were dealing with a certified historic structure in a city in Pennsylvania. And as a result, this individual invested money to make to run their business from those buildings. The purpose of this credit, simply put, the government gives you a credit for this. And why? Because they want you to stay in downtown. They want to, to prevent you from relocating from older and also if it's the area is considered economically disadvantaged at the same time preserving historical structure because you are kind of keeping the downtown nice that's the whole reason for this how much is the credit the credit is 20 percent of your expenditure and you have to spread this credit over a period of five years don't worry we'll work with some numbers and it begins when the renovated building is put into service. So once it's put into service, it means you spend the money, you're using it now, you have five years to recapture the credit. Now, when claiming the credit, the value of the restored structure is decreased by the entire allowable credit. What does that mean? It means they gave you a credit. Well, if they gave you the credit, you have to reduce the, you have to reduce by the amount of the credit, your basis. And we're going to see how it works. Remember, you're going to add some money, then you're going to, adding some money, it's going to increase your basis of that building, but you're going to get a credit. The credit would reduce the basis. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The best way is to look actually at an example. Maria spent $150,000 to restore a certified historic structure. This structure had an adjusted basis of 60,000 and Maria spent 150. Now, if this is a building, this is a regular building, what's gonna happen, we would say the basis is 150 plus 60. We would say the basis of this building is 210. Maria is eligible for 20% of the 150,000. So she's eligible for $30,000 credit for this restoration cost. Well, the credit will be claimed again over a five year period. So if we take 30,000 divided by five, she's gonna get $6,000 annually. So after applying the credit, Maria increases the basis of the building by the net amount of 120. So what happened is this. Remember, she spent 150, that's going to increase her basis by 150. Then she received the credit of 30,000 by the government from the government. Overall, the net increase, the net increase in the basis is 120,000. Now, so in other words, the restoration expense added to the basis, but the credit reduced the basis. This should, quick, quick, quick notes about additional requirements. For one thing, you have to finish the work within 24 months. So when you start the work, it can go forever. Okay, so if it's, a, if it's a certified historic structure, you have to finish the significant amount of work in 24 hours. And how much money do you have to spend? Well, you have to spend the greater of two amount, either the adjusted basis of the property prior to the rehab expense. So whatever the adjusted basis, you have to spend more money than the adjusted basis or simply put more than $5,000, which is that's easy to surpass spending more than $5,000. Now bear in mind, the qualified expenditure does not include, exclude, 
expenses incurred in the process of acquiring a building that does that doesn't count expenses for facilities connected to the building such as parking lot and expenses for expanding an existing structure those don't qualify let's take a look at the second tax credit business tax credit which is work opportunity credit well what is that for? The Employment Opportunity Tax Credit incentivizes the government want to incentivize companies, employer to do what? To hire people. Yes, they always want you to hire people, right? But they want you to hire people from various targeted and economically challenged groups. What, who are these groups? These groups would include long-term unemployed individuals, someone who've been out of work for 27 weeks, qualified ex-felons, high-risk youth, food stamp recipients, veterans, summer youth employees, and long-term family assistant recipient. For example, the individual that used to be my client when I was in practice, he used to hire specifically qualified ex-felon. Why? He was a good friend with the warden, and this is how he get to know some of the ex-felons. But that's a different story. But I, that's, that's the reason. What is the amount of the credit? The tax credit is typically 40% of the first $6,000 of wages paid for each eligible employee during 12 months of employment. Now, this 12 months could spend over two years. It's total of 12 months. If an employer claims a credit, it means if they give you a credit, it means, well, you reduce your expenses, their deduction for the wages decreased by this amount. So let's assume you paid $100,000 in wages and you had $6,000 or $8,000 in credits. Well, guess what? Now, your net wages is 92,000. That's, that's all how much you can deduct because the government already gave you a credit. To qualify for the 40%, the employee must receive certification from a designated local agency as a member of a targeted group and provide at least 400 hours of service. What happens if you don't meet the first condition but uh, if you happen to meet the first one but not the second one it means you did not put the hour the credit is reduced to 25 percent as long as you complete at least 120 hours of service again the best way to illustrate this is to take a look at an example on april 15th x3 john a taxpayer for the for the physical year hires samantha a certified member of a targeted group during the first five months Samantha earns $4,000 for 400 hours. So she met the 400 hour week. Well, John is eligible 40%, 1,600 credit. Samantha continued to work for John in 20X4 and earn an additional $9,000 by March 31st. And here we assume she met the hours. Well, as the credit applies to the first $6,000, well, she already earned the four the, of the 6,000. John already used up four, what's left is two. So in year 20x4, we have 2,000, and that 2,000 will earn a 40% credit, $800. Now bear in mind, going forward, John will no longer be allowed, or the credit is no longer available, because that's it. For this employee, that's, that's all what you got. Now you want to get another employee, part of the targeted group, then you can claim this credit again, because it's per employee. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, whether you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student, to look at additional MCQs, true false, additional resources that's going to help you understand the concept better so you are better prepared, whether it's in your classroom or professional certification. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.